Hey, this is Joe from Home Studio Corner. I got this question from Tony. Tony writes, I am totally mystified. If a studio monitor has a response curve starting at 100 hertz or 80 hertz low end, how come when I play my bass guitar through it, whose low E is 41 hertz, I can still hear the low E? I cannot find an answer for this anywhere. Tony, it's a great question. Let's find out. First of all, though, we need to find out, is Tony right? Is the low E on a bass guitar 41 hertz? According to the infallible Wikipedia, uh, the answer is yes. A little over 41 hertz is the low E on a bass guitar. For this experiment, we're going to need a bass and a small speaker. <laughs> They're right here. This is the Eris. E 3.5 BT from Personas, link in the description. These have a can't, three and a half inch woofer, small little speaker, uh, has Bluetooth. I actually have these set up in my living room. We listen to music all the time. They actually sound really good. This is just a bass. It's a short scale bass, but it'll work. According to the manual, this speaker has a frequency response of 80 hertz to 20 kilohertz. That means it's too small to reproduce much of anything below 80 hertz. All right, moment of truth. I've got this bass routed through my mixer to this speaker. This speaker can't produce anything below 80 hertz. I'm going to play a low E, which is 41 hertz on the bass. We shouldn't be able to hear it, right? Here we go. Womp womp. All right, so why did that happen? 41 hertz is the fundamental frequency that I just played. But what makes a bass guitar sound like a bass guitar isn't the fundamental note or the fundamental frequency. It's the fundamental frequency plus all these other frequencies called harmonics or overtones. That's why the bass guitar sounds like a bass guitar and a piano sounds like a piano. And a double bass section sounds like a double bass section. Those are all the same 41 hertz frequency, but they all have a different combination of overtones, but you can actually hear all of them on that little speaker. What happens if you remove all of those overtones and harmonics? What you're left with is the simplest form of a sound wave called a sine wave. Here's what that sounds like. So could you hear that? Yeah, I couldn't either. Well, I mean, I could barely hear it on my big speakers and then the small speakers, no chance. So why am I bringing this up? Why does it matter? I mean, it's, it's mildly interesting, but what's the practical application for us making music in home studios? Here's the takeaway. If your bass guitar tracks or just any of your low frequency material, if it's too clean, if it's too pure, if it's too close to the sound of a sine wave, then anyone who listens to your music on smaller speakers, earbuds, is not going to be able to hear it, and that's a shame. Here's a bass track from a song I recently recorded. What do you notice about the bass tone? It's got a lot of grit. It's got some overdrive, some distortion on it. What is overdrive and distortion? Saturation, what are those things? That's literally adding harmonic content to the existing signal. So in this case, Joel used a combination of guitar pedals and had the amp cranked to create some grit on his bass. I never, I almost never want a clean bass tone because if it's too clean, it becomes too sine wavy and it's hard to hear it, A, in the mix over the other instruments and B, on smaller systems. It's like the bass just disappeared. However, a bass part like this still cuts through really well, still retains its low end, still sounds big and beefy. It's not a guitar, it's a bass guitar, but it also will cut through and play nicely on small speakers. Here's a great way to test that. Either get yourself a set of small speakers to check your mixes, or you can do this little <laughs> redneck hack here. I've got a mix here. Here's my what my overall mix sounds like. All I need to do is put an EQ on the mix bus at the very end of the chain, add a high pass filter at 80 hertz, and now I'm hearing it as if I'm listening through small speakers. And as always, if I'm trying to decide, am I hearing the bass or not, easiest way to determine that is to mute the bass while you're listening. So let's do that. I 
I'm absolutely hearing that bass. Now, of course, on the smaller speakers, we're missing that big octave down below, but we still have a representation of what the mix sounds like. And then when we get to our nice stereo speakers, our nice studio monitors, it sounds like this and makes us happy. All right, that's it for today. We did a little science. We listened to a little rock and roll. We had a little fun. Hope this was fun for you. If you liked it and you're not a subscriber yet, please subscribe. If you love mixing and you want to learn my process, it's a five-step process for getting better mixes. You can have a free PDF guide called Five Step Mix Guide. I almost forgot the name of it. You can check that out at fivestepmix.com. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.